Hello and welcome to Healthcare Today. In today's show, I'm going to be joined by the experts at Albany Urology. We're going to be discussing mainly the urological conditions that affect men. My first guest, Dr. Ajib, Governor Henderson, and Stephen Snipes. I'd like to welcome all three of you. Now, Dr. Ajib, I'd like to start with you first. Before we go into the details of discussing prostate cancer, what is the prostate? So the prostate is a small walnut-shaped gland that secretes the seminal fluid and that helps in the nourishment and the transportation of sperm cells. Are there any stats in regards to prostate cancer among men? Yes, so prostate cancer is quite common in men and some autopsy studies from Scandinavian countries have shown that the percentage can be as high as 60% in men above the age of 70 and even can reach 80% in men above the age of 80. So it is estimated that one in nine men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer at some point during their lifetime. Now, when it comes to U.S. states, Georgia ranks ninth when compared to other U.S. states in regards to the number of new prostate cancer cases. Governor, I'd like to come to you now. Is there any group that's at a higher risk for prostate cancer? Absolutely. So we're seeing an increased number of prostate cancer cases, especially in the African-American community where one in six men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. And why is that? Uh, we can look at family history, genetics, um, even sometimes uh, lack of follow-up on, on routine care um, as, as some of the, the causes of, of you know, exacerbating uh, cancer. Dr. Ajib, should all men be screened for prostate cancer? Yes, screening is very important, not only in prostate cancer, but in many other types of cancers, especially that we are living in the era of preventive medicine. And just to let everyone know that screening is when we test for a disease when you have no uh, symptoms. What does uh, screening for prostate cancer consist of? So prostate cancer screening is a simple blood test where we measure a protein secreted by the prostate called the PSA and we are usually looking for elevated, result, elevated uh, test results. Now, traditionally, when we get a high PSA, we used to ask and rush for a prostate biopsy right away. But nowadays, and especially here at Albany Urology, we ask for other tumor markers, like a PCA3 or a 4K test, and sometimes we even ask for imaging specific for the uh, prostate. And I would like to mention also that what we're offering here at the office is genetic testing, because it was shown that men that carry the BRCA gene and at high risk of getting prostate cancer uh, during their life. And uh, so we test for that gene here at the office. And by the way, this is the same gene that was shown to increase the risk of breast cancer in women. And Dr. Ajib, why is it important to screen for prostate cancer? Screening is very important uh, because most common types of prostate cancers present with, without any symptoms. And I would like to say, so every man above the age of 50 should have a discussion with his primary care physician or urologist about prostate cancer screening. And this screening should even start sometimes at younger ages in men with strong family history or African Americans. How is prostate cancer diagnosed? It is usually by a prostate biopsy and this is usually under ultras ultrasound guided or MRI guided biopsies. And Stephen, I'd like to come to you now and tell me about once a patient is diagnosed with prostate cancer, what's their next step? Okay, after we do the biopsy, normally they come back and we get to discuss the pathology at that time. And when you're discussing the pathology, there is different you know, grades of prostate cancer. We use a Gleasing scoring system for that. There's actually low-grade prostate cancer, which we can sometimes just observe or actively survey and monitor the PSA blood test on a quarterly basis. Some of the higher grade malignancies of the prostate are Gleason 7, 8, and 9. We actually sometimes have to do imaging to make sure the cancer is contained inside the prostate gland before we can make a final determination what is the best therapy for that patient, whether it be surgery to remove the prostate, or sometimes we do radiation and or brachytherapy to cure this prostate cancer. Once you're diagnosed, we offer you the genetic test, not necessarily for your benefit, but for your family, siblings, brothers, and such, so they will know if you have the genetic mutation which would predispose you to that malignancy and you would need to be monitored a little more closely. Dr. Ajib, what are the treatment options available for men with prostate cancer? So that's a very important question. Now, many prostate cancer cases are um, usually like localized to the prostate and slowly growing, and these usually cause no harm. While on the other hand, we have really aggressive types of prostate cancer that can spread 
to the lymph nodes, to the bones or other organs in the body, and these usually require treatment. So we do have three main treatment options. The first one is what we call active surveillance, and this is we closely monitor the patient with serial imaging and blood tests. Another type of, another treatment option would be a radical prostatectomy, which is the surgical removal of the prostate. And the good thing is here in Albany is that we do that robotically. So when we compare a robotic radical prostatectomy to the traditional surgery that used to be done before, patients will have a faster recovery period and less hospital uh, stay. The third treatment option would be to um, uh, offer patients radiation therapy or implanting radioactive seeds in their prostates. And I would like to mention here that at Albany Urology, we do have a medical board. So when we, uh, when we have uh, complicated cases, we usually dis discuss those cases at the medical board to, in order for us to offer like the standard of care treatment options as recommended by the American Urological Guidelines.